Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at worked solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam which will be sat by students studying BTEC Level 3 Nationals in Engineering. Now the document that we're going to be referring to today are the sample assessment materials that are or have previously been provided on the Edexcel website and the document that we're going to be referring to in particular is Issue 1 of the sample assessment materials. Question 6 requires us to calculate the magnitude and direction of a resultant force and the scenario states the following. The diagram represents the tension forces acting on a single point in a structural framework. Calculate the magnitude and direction from the horizontal of the resultant force for the system of coplanar forces shown in the diagram. So basically what we have is we have three forces. We have a 10 newton force acting directly upwards. We have a 7 newton force acting at 25 degrees from the horizontal and we have a 5 newton force acting at 45 degrees from the horizontal as shown. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is to resolve the 7 newton and the 5 newton force into x and y components. And what I'm going to do is just add a sketch of each of those. We have our 7 newton force, meaning the hypotenuse of that triangle is 7 newtons and down here we have our 5 newton force meaning that the hypotenuse of that triangle is 5 newtons. This diagram isn't drawn to scale but what we have is a 45 degree angle here and a 25 degree angle here. So we need to find the x component of our 7 newton force, which is represented by the line at the bottom there. And we need to find the y component, which is represented by the vertical line. And then we're going to repeat that for the 5 newton force. So we're going to need to apply trigonometry to this problem. And we have a couple of equations that we're going to apply. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining these. The details of these are available in the courses that we offer through the Engineers Academy. But basically, we have one formula that states the adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta. And the opposite is hypotenuse sin theta. And we're going to label each of these triangles. We know that the longest side is the hypotenuse. We know that the side opposite the angle is the opposite. And we know that the remaining side is the adjacent. And now we can do that for the 5 newton force. We have the hypotenuse. We have the opposite, opposite the angle. And the adjacent is the remaining side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate the x and y components of the resultant force. And the x components of the resultant force is going to be all of our x components added together. And by x components, we mean the horizontal components. And then we're going to calculate the sum of the y components of the resultant force, which is all of the y components added together, or all of the vertical parts. So down in our working area, we're going to start with the x components, and I'll just write x comps for now. x components are horizontal components. So we have a horizontal component of the 7 newton force, and it's going to be the adjacent on our triangle because the adjacent is running horizontally. And we've said in the top left that adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta. So our x component of that 7 newton force is going to be hypotenuse cos theta, or 7 cos 25. Next we have the x component of our 5 newton force. So again referring to our diagram that we've just sketched, the horizontal component is the adjacent. But we need to be careful here because the 5 newton force is acting down and left, so this direction here, our x component is going to be negative because it goes from right to left. So we need to minus, adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta, so we need to minus 5 cos 45 for our x component. And finally, we have the 10 newton force, but that 10 newton force acts vertically, meaning it only has a y component. It doesn't have an x component. So the x component of our resultant force is the sum of the x component from the 7 newton force minus 
the x component of the 5 newton force. And that gives us an x component equal to 2.8086 to 4 decimal places. Let's repeat that now for our y components, so y comps. And we'll take the forces in the same order. So first of all, we'll begin with a 7 newton force, which has a y component of 7 sine theta, and it's acting upwards, so it's positive. So we have 7 sine theta, or 7 sine 25. And the y component, as before, is acting downwards from bottom to top, meaning that it's negative. So we need to minus 5 sine 45. But in this case, we also need to take account of our 10 newton force, which has a y component of 10 newtons. It's acting directly upwards. So to that, we need to add 10. And that will give us the y component of our resultant force. So we have 7 sine 25 minus 5 sine 45 plus 10, which equals 9.4228. And again, that's accurate to four decimal places. Both of these components, x and y, are in newtons. And the other thing that's important to note is that they're both positive. Now we don't have a great deal of space to work here, but what we have is we have an x component of plus 2.8086 and we have a y component of plus 9.4228. So I'm going to use some of the space in the section below to re-sketch the resultant force. So re-sketching our resultant force, we have an x component of plus 2.8086. It's positive, so it goes left to right. 2.8086 and we have a y component of plus 9.4228 it's plus so bottom to top 9.4228 and we're trying to find the resultant force or the single force that connects the beginning and the ends together like so and we're also trying to find the angle or the direction which will be represented by this angle here, which I'm going to call thigh. So the magnitude of our resultant force using Pythagoras' theorem, we can state the following. R squared equals 2.8086 squared plus 9.4228 squared. Now once we've calculated that, we must remember to square root the answer. So multiplying out our right hand side gives us 96.6774. So r squared equals 96.6774. Note we're not asked to find r squared, we're asked to find r, so we need to square root that answer. And the square root of that answer gives us 9.8325. Now I'm working to four decimal places there, that may be a little bit excessive, but the question doesn't specify how many decimal places to state your answer to, so I'm kind of erring on the side of caution here. Now finally we need to calculate the angle. And what we can use here is the equation that states that tan phi, or tan of the angle, equals opposite over adjacent, or toa in soccer toa. The opposite, or opposite the angle, is 9.4228, and the adjacent is 2.8086. Therefore, phi. is going to be tan to the minus 1 of the answer that we get when we do 9.4228 divided by 2.8086. Now, 9.4228 divided by 2.8086 is 3.3550 to four decimal places. But I'm going to keep the full calculator display and I'm going to do tan to the minus 1 of answer. 
and that gives me an angle of 73.4 degrees to one decimal place. So phi equals 73.4 degrees to one decimal place.